Gotta to prepare today's lecture. Where are my notes? Here we are, let's get started. How about a little music? That's better. <clears throat> the uh, origin and accumulation of oil and gas. Where do I start? Maybe I should talk about what petroleum is, what makes up oil and gas, and then I'll talk about its origin. Okay, what is petroleum? Well, first of all, it's a combination of elements. An element. An element is a fundamental component of any entity. A fundamental com... No, no, no simplify. Think. Think. How can I say this? An element. It's the smallest complete unit of any whole. That's better. Now, give some examples. Okay. Let's take a look at the periodic chart. It lists the elements. Things like calcium, iron either individually or in combination. These elements make up our entire world. Gold is an example of a single element substance. And salt is a combination of two elements, sodium and chlorine. Petroleum. Petroleum is a combination of two elements, hydrogen and carbon. Hydrogen is colorless, gaseous, and because it's one of the components of water, plentiful on Earth. Carbon is another common element. It's abundant on Earth because it's part of every living thing, plant and animal. Sometimes hydrogen and carbon combine. Combined to form petroleum hydrocarbons. Now I've introduced hydrocarbons. What do I want to say about them? Well, for one thing, hydrogen and carbon form many different types of hydrocarbons, each with a different number of carbons and hydrogens, each with a different arrangement. They can be simple hydrocarbons, or they can be complex. Because they come with different arrangements, we find them in different forms. Like gases, liquids, and even solids, like paraffin. Things we call petroleum. There, that's more like it. Okay, what have I said so far? An element is the basic building block or component of any substance. And the substance we call petroleum is mainly a combination of two elements hydrogen, and carbon. Okay, well, we've talked about what hydrocarbons are. Now let's talk about their origin, how they're formed. How are hydrocarbons formed? Now let's look at two theories. 
Start with the inorganic theory. Okay. Inorganic. Non-living. This theory says that even though petroleum contains carbon, the basic unit of living matter, it didn't come from plants and animals. Instead, it developed in the Earth's crust from carbon and hydrogen liberated from molten rocks. Somehow, this carbon and hydrogen combined with other elements to form petroleum hydrocarbons. The inorganic theory. Not the most popular. Question. Why not? Well, for one thing, there's little evidence to support it. Instead, most evidence points us in another direction. Most petroleum hydrocarbons have been found closely associated with living matter, particularly microscopic plants and animals. This fact, plus others, leads most geologists to accept the... Uh, to uh, accept the organic theory on the origin and accumulation of petroleum. This theory states that petroleum is formed from living things. Mainly, microscopic plants and animals. Tiny organisms that lived in rivers, swamps, and seas millions of years ago. Now, how did these tiny organisms become gas, oil, and other forms of petroleum? Hmm. What to say first? Let's see. Rivers have been flowing toward the sea for millions of years. Carving through the earth, carrying eroded grains of rock. We call silt and sediment. With millions of microscopic organisms. The rivers spill into the ocean, where the fine-grained sediment and organic matter gradually settle on the ocean floor. Slowly sifting toward the bottom, this material layers the ocean floor, accumulating at rates of an inch or so a year. In some places, even less. At the same time, tiny marine or sea organisms die and collect on the ocean floor. Gradually, almost imperceptibly, this sediment builds up. It builds until after millions of years, layers thousands of feet thick form. Each layer presses down on top of others, compacting the sediment and compressing the organic material between the grains. Eventually, the bottommost sediments turn to rock, sedimentary rock, like this. At the same time, another phenomenon occurs. Some of the organic material trapped in the rock is transformed buried for millions of years under considerable heat and pressure. With the supply of oxygen cut off, the organic material chemically changes. It becomes petroleum hydrocarbons. The lightest hydrocarbons are gases. The heavier ones are liquids. And the heaviest are solids. The pressure of layer upon layer of sediment has another effect. The pressure gradually forces the oil and gas and any salt water trapped with it to migrate out of the original sedimentary layer. By the time the sediments are tightly compacted into rock, the hydrocarbons have been squeezed from these source beds to the Earth's surface or into other layers of rock called reservoir beds. Now, how can fluids move through rock layers? 
Better start with an explanation of porous and permeable rock. Remember, sedimentary rock is actually tightly compacted grains of sand, silt, and clay. Very small pores or microscopic spaces remain between the grains. When the pores and the connections between the pores are large enough, fluids, hydrocarbons in this case, can move from one pore to another. The rock then is porous and permeable. The hydrocarbons migrate through porous and permeable layers until they reach the Earth's surface, or as more frequently happens, until they reach a zone that is relatively impermeable. Then they are trapped. Someone's sure to ask, so... Better give a brief explanation of how traps and reservoirs are formed. Let's see, where to begin? Sometimes, sedimentary rock layers are not deposited as one continuous sheet. Instead, the sediment will differ from one part to another. Sometimes the rock layers will be porous, like sand in one part, and non-porous, like clay, in another. This change in porosity helps form a trap or reservoir for the migrating hydrocarbons. The change in porosity blocks their migration. Okay, that's one type of trap. But there are others. During the millions of years that the sedimentary layers were forming, other geologic events were also taking place. The Earth's layers were tilting, folding, and breaking apart. The result? The original layers were broken up, deformed, and pushed out of place. Some of these rock layers are relatively impermeable. Fluids can't migrate through them. They form traps. They block the continued migration of the hydrocarbons. Okay, now that we have the oil and gas accumulated in traps, where do we go from here? How about looking at the trapped hydrocarbons a little closer? Gas hydrocarbons, because they are lightest, migrate to the top of the reservoir. The oil is suspended in the middle, and any water present remains at the bottom. If you look at this trap even closer, you can see that the separation of fluids is not total. There is some gas dissolved in the oil, and some water shares pore space with the oil and gas. But the bulk of the fluids do migrate to different parts of the trap. Now for the difficult part. How do you find large accumulations of petroleum when they are trapped so far beneath the surface? What do geologists look for? Hmm. Guess our next topic should be a more detailed look at erosion and sedimentation. Actually, I think that should be Wednesday's lecture. Well, enough for one day.